In this video, we're going to look at thirds. Whenever you write a number with a square root sign and it's an irrational answer, it's a third. Okay? So in other words, you can't get rid of the square root. So here, if you were to try to square root 2, that would be 1.4, so on. Okay, and it would go on forever. That's an irrational number, so it's a third. If you were to try to do the square root of 6 again, you're going to get an irrational answer, so therefore that is a third. 9, however, if you do the square root of 9, you get 3. So 3 is a whole number, an integer, so that's going to be not a third. Okay? So a third is whenever you square root or even cube root a number and you get an irrational answer. So you would write it in its, in its exact form. So this is uh, root 2 is written exactly. If you were to try and write it as a decimal number, it's not exactly. The root square root of 6 is exact, so therefore it's a third. But root 9, well that would be 3, so that's not a third. Okay, so these are the rules you're going to use whenever you're working with thirds. First of all, root a times root b is equal to root a times b. So in other words, if you times two thirds, you can write it as a, third, well, it's a single third of a, b. Um, or sim also, whenever you're simplifying thirds, you will want to use the reverse. So if you've got root a, b, you can write that as root a times root b. Okay, and we'll look at sort of how to do that later on in the video. Root a divided by root b is equal to root a over b. Okay, in other words, if you divide uh, a and b and you square root, so it's going to be root a over b. Uh, root a squared, would that be root a times root a? Well, that would be, I suppose, using rule 1, root a times um, root a times root a would be root a squared. And whenever you square root something squared, you're going to be left with a. Okay, so whenever you square a third, you would just get the number that was originally under the square root sign. Okay, so let's look at how to multiply thirds. So, if you had root 2 times root 7, well, that would be root 2 times root 7. Well, using the first law, root a times root b, it's root a, b. So you just do 2 times 7, which is 14, and you get the square root of 14. So that would be square root of 14. Let's have a look at another one. Root 20 times root 5. Well, if you were to do root 20 times root 5, you times the numbers. 20 times 5 is 100, so that would be the square root of 100. Now notice the square root of 100 is 10, because 10 is a square number, so you can work that out. So that's quite neat, because if you think about it, you've got two irrational terms, so root 20 times root 5. And when you times them together, you get root 100, and then whenever you square root, you get 10. So that's, that's quite neat. Uh, also, if you did something like this, root 2 times root 3 times root 2, you could then just times them one at a time. So root 2 times root 3 is root 6, and then root 6 times 2 would be root 12. Uh, this one can actually be simplified. Um, I'll show you how to do that later on in the video. Okay, sometimes you're asked to multiply um, surge that have got numbers in front of them. So you would say this is 3 root 5 multiplied by 2 root 3. So that's how you would read it. To multiply them, you just multiply the numbers and then you multiply the surge. So 3 times 2 is 6. Root 5 times root 3, well root 5 times root 3 is root 15. So 3 root 5 times 2 root 3 would be 6 root 15. So 7 root 2 times 2 root 18. So again, multiply the numbers at the front. So two times uh, 7 times 2 would be 14. Root 2 times root um, 18 would be root 36. So times in 2 by 18. Now you can actually work out the square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6. So whenever you can simplify it, you would then do 14 times the square root of 36 is 6. And then you do 6 times 14, which would be equal to 84. It's useful to be able to simplify a third. So if you had root 28, using the first rule where you would you can times root a times root b to get root, actually root a times root b is equal to root a b. Likewise, you could split it up into two numbers that were times together to give you 28. So here, we could split root 28 up into two numbers that were times together to give you root 28. Now... Whenever you want to simplify thirds, it's really useful to find a square number that is a factor of it. So here, if you notice, 4 goes into 28, or 28 is divisible by 4, which is a square number. And you always try to get the largest square number. So just this quick list, I'll just drop my square numbers down here. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, uh, 49, and so on, okay? So here, uh, 28 is divisible by 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to write root 4 because that's the square number, times root, well, 4 times 7 is 28, so root 7. So it's root 28 is root 4 times root 7. Now you can square root 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So you get 2 times root 7, 
Well, in surgery, instead of writing two times root seven, a bit like an algebra, rather than writing two times x, you'd write two x. So instead of writing two times root seven, we're going to write two root seven. Make sure your two is a large two, okay? Um, this is a whole number, it's two times root seven. Um, if you were to make it smaller, then that would be the, like, well, two would be the square root if it's a three cube root. So make sure this is a large number, two root seven. Let's simplify the square root of 72. Well, the square root of 72, you want to split it up into two different numbers that would times the or two different thirds that would times together to give you root 72. In terms of square numbers, the largest square number that will go into 72 is 36. So that would be root 36 times root 2. The square root of 36 is 6, so that's going to be 6 root 2. Okay, this question says, multiply and simplify 2 root 15 multiplied by 3 root 5. So looking at what we've done before, we just multiply the numbers in front of the third. So 2 times 3 is going to be 6. And root 15 times root 5 then would be root 75. Now it says multiply and simplify. So we need to simplify this root 75. So remember to simplify a third, what you want to do is split it up into two different thirds. It will times to give it to give you root 75. So you've got 6. And then let's think of your square numbers. Your square numbers are going to be 1. 4, 9, 16, 25, 25 is a factor, uh, 36, no, so that's the largest square number that will go into 75, so root 75 would be equal to root 25 times root 3, okay, so our root 75 is root 25 times root 3, now remember the square root of 25 is 5, so that gives you 6 bracket 5 root 3, and this just means 6 times 5 root 3, so 6 times 5 root 3 would be 30 root 3. Okay, so 2 root 15 times 3 root 5 would be 30 root 3. Okay, so let's look at how to divide thirds. So remember, root a divided by root b is equal to root a over b. Okay, in other words, just divide a by b and have it as a third. So, root 15 divided by root 5, so 15 divided by 5 is 3, so root 15 divided by root 5 would then be equal to root 3. Okay, this one, root, 20, uh, root 40 divided by root 2, so obviously root 40 divided by root 2 would be root 20. Now let's actually get in the habit of simplifying your uh, thirds as an answer. So remember root 20, well, square number, largest square number that would go into 20 is 4, so this would be root 4 times root 5. And then that would be 2 root 5. So root 40 divided by root 2 would be root 20, just dividing. But then if you simplify it, you would get 2 root 5. Just get in the habit of doing that.